In this video we will explain how an auto darkening helmet works and give you a few things to take into consideration before buying one. A welding helmet is necessary to protect your eyes and skin from burning when you're welding. It filters out infrared and ultraviolet rays and also protects your face against heat, sparks and spatter. When you look through the lens of an automatic welding helmet, the weld piece and working area will be clearly visible before the arc is struck. Depending on the type of filter, you can see a bit of a green tint, but the colors can also have a more natural tone, like with true color lenses. The filter of a welding helmet is usually solar powered, bottom battery powered or both. Most times it automatically turns on when a helmet is being used, but in some cases you will have to press a button to activate it. Once you start welding, the sensors on the front of the welding helmet detect the arc and the lens automatically goes dark. When you stop welding, it switches back to light. Basic welding helmets typically have two sensors, while more advanced ones can have up to six sensors. Welding helmets with two sensors work fine if you have a clear line of sight to your work. But if you weld out of position, those sensors can easily get obstructed by objects such as pipes and then the filter will fill by not going to its dark state. Therefore, it's recommended to have at least three or four sensors. Generally speaking, the more sensors, the better. The lens reaction time is also known as the switching speed. It indicates how quickly the lens darkens when welding begins. The faster the response is, the more protection your eyes receive. If you spend all day welding or need to do a lot of tech welding, a slower reaction time can lead to symptoms of arc flash, which is eye discomfort that feels like a dry, scratchy sensation. To prevent this, you should get a welding helmet with a faster reaction time. In order to make good quality welds, the weld pool needs to be clearly visible to you. Therefore, it's important that the darkness of the lens is well regulated. The darkness can be regulated by changing the shade of the lens. A fixed shade lens can only darken to a predefined shade, which is usually a number 10 shade. If you're going to be welding similar material using a single welding process, a fixed shade lens will suffice. But if you're like most people and are going to use different welding processes and different materials of different thicknesses, it's better to choose a variable shade helmet. These usually range from a number 8 or 9 to a number 13 shade. The higher the shade number, the darker the lens. Welding at higher temperatures creates a brighter arc and will require a darker shade setting compared to lower amperage work. The choice of shade number not only depends on the amperage you use, but also on the type of welding process and a person's eyesight sensitivity. Depending on the type of helmet, you can either set the shade by turning the dial on the control panel inside or with the shade knob on the outside of the helmet. Often, Variable shade welding helmets also have a mode for gas cutting operations and grinding. The sensitivity determines what intensity of bright light is sufficient to trigger the darkening of the lens. A high sensitivity triggers the lens to go dark as soon as there's any bright light. It is often used for tick welding with lower amperages when the arc isn't as bright or where there's a lot of ambient light. A high sensitivity is not recommended when others are welding nearby because that can trigger your lens to go dark when you're not welding yourself. In that case, a low sensitivity is required. But under normal circumstances, you can set it to mid-range. The delay time is the speed at which the helmet switches from dark to light once you're done welding. It is meant to protect the eyes from bright light from the weld pool when the arc has stopped. A short delay time is ideal for tech welding. A longer delay time is important in high amperage work and when welding aluminium, because a molten weld pool remains bright for some time after welding. 
Welding helmets are available with a range of different viewing areas. The size of the viewing area can be important if you're regularly welding out of position or require visibility over a wider area. You may want a larger viewing area if you're working in an area with restricted space, but be aware that a larger viewing area can also make the helmet less compact and often adds weight to it. If you wear your helmet all day, you should take the weight of your helmet into consideration because a lighter welding helmet will reduce the strain on your neck and increases comfort whilst you work. The quality of view through the glass is defined by the optical clarity. This is evaluated in four categories. Optical class, diffusion of light, variations on luminous transmittance and angle dependence. Ratings are graded on a scale of 1 to 3, with 1 being the best and 3 being the worst. So an optical clarity rating of 1111 gives you the best quality view. Experienced welders can notice the difference in clarity between a 1 and a 2. The not so experienced welder will probably only notice the difference between a 1 and a 3. How well you can see through the lens of the welding filter also depends on how worn or damaged the protection lenses are. There is an outer lens and an inner lens. One in front of the filter, on the outside, that protects the welding filter from metal sparks and spatter, and one on the inside, behind the filter. They should be replaced when they are damaged. It's also possible to place a magnifying helmet lens on the inside, often called a cheetah lens, to magnify the work area. For the welding helmet to fit properly, you will have to adjust the headgear. There are different ways of doing this. You can make the head size bigger or smaller by pushing and rotating the knob at the back until you reach the desired tightness. You can also adjust the head height by adjusting the straps at the top. To align the viewing window with the eyes when the helmet is in a lowered position, adjust the tilt angle by repositioning the lift control arm on one side or sometimes both sides. A fully adjustable helmet also provides the ability to adjust how close the helmet is located to the user's face. You can set this distance by loosening the tension knobs on both sides, sliding it forwards or backwards to the desired position and retighten them. By increasing the distance, the headgear will be further back and the helmet further out, leaving you with enough space to wear glasses or a half mask respirator underneath. The up and down friction of the helmet can be regulated with the knobs on the side. The knob tightness controls how easily the shield raises and drops when you knot. This should not be too heavy as you want to minimize neck strain and reduce fatigue with extended use. Some helmets also have a pivot on the back. This can be nice if you'd like to wear a cap backwards or you want to tie up your hair. At the front you can also see a removable sweatband. It can be washed or replaced with a different one if needed. Finally, if you want to test if your automatic welding filter is working, turn the shade to the darkest setting, usually shade 13. Set the sensitivity to the highest setting by turning it clockwise and point the sensors towards the light source. The filter should now switch to the dark state. If it does not work or you have other problems with your auto darkening filter lens, you can check out our troubleshooting guide at tickacademy.com. Thank you for watching.